Hey guys, today I'm gonna to talk about the top 10 tips for successful photorealistic drawing. And even though I'm working with white charcoal on black paper, these tips can apply to other mediums as well. Rule number one, stare at your reference photo the entire time you're drawing. Stare at your photo so much that you look at your photo more than you actually look at your drawing. In addition to staring at your drawing, zoom into your drawing to see those fine details. Make sure that you're capturing every tiny little nook and cranny that that photograph has. Now, another thing you need to think about is if your reference photo is blurry or out of focus, you're only as good as your bad reference photo. So maybe you need to go ahead and take that reference photo and bring it into a photo editor, make it black and white, make it more in focus, whatever you can do to make that reference photo really, really clean. All right, tip number two, make sure that you have the correct supplies. In class, I'll often walk up to students to help them with something and they don't have the right supplies. And I'm like, ah, wait, I can't help you. So just make sure that you guys are always um, you have like the assortment of supplies that you need for that project. So let's talk about the kneaded eraser. So I would highly recommend using a kneaded eraser instead of a vinyl eraser. And the reason why is your kneaded eraser is just great for not leaving any residue on your paper. It's also great because it doesn't deteriorate the tooth of your paper. And once the tooth of your paper is deteriorated, you really can't do much with it. I do love these vinyl stick erasers, but watch this. So I'll use my vinyl stick eraser right here, and you can see that it leaves a residue behind. Now that residue is fine in this case because I can just wipe it off, but in a lot of cases, it's gonna make it so that I smudge my drawing. Again, the kneaded eraser is so nice because you can um, make it go to a point, you can flatten it to kind of lift value out versus go all the way back to white. Another handy trick is a lot of you guys are gonna notice that um, you can't make things go all the way back to white because you've sketched it, right? So over here, I had some sketch lines. So what I did is I took my black um, charcoal pencil uh, and then I just very, very at the very end of polishing this up, I kind of take that black charcoal pencil just to fix edges that maybe I can't fix with my eraser. Now, this is very important that you guys understand. This should be used as a finishing touch. Never, like, don't lay down the black pencil and then on top of that, um, do uh, white charcoal, because it'll look gray and muddy and it's just not gonna give you the right effect. After you use your black charcoal pencil, I would take your blending stump and make sure you're using the side of it that you want to be dirty and, um, just kind of smooth it out because sometimes it leaves like black lines that you don't want to see. So if you can avoid using this black charcoal pencil, I would. It's only used for desperation, um, for really, really, really fine details. So just keep that in mind. All right, tip number three. Um, always keep your pencil sharp. So you guys know I'm a stickler about this. You really can't get any fine details with pencils that are dull. So I'm a big fan of these little metal erasers. I really like the larger hole because I feel like my pencil breaks less in it. Um, but bottom line, just keep those pencils sharp. Tip number four. Guys, keep your hands off your drawing. No smearing and smudging, okay? That scratch paper should stay under your hand at all time, just like it has been in my video. Um, use your scratch paper to your advantage. Also, if you've got straight edges, use it to keep those edges straight. Tip number five, blending stump. Make sure when you are shading that you have a blending stump with a light edge and a dark edge. Also, make sure that your blending stump has a nice point on it. You can always bring it back to a point with um, sandpaper, but notice the sandpaper does kind of get it like a little fuzzy. So um, you need that pointy blending stump to get into fine areas. Now, if you have a big blending stump and you're like, I need to get into tinier areas, then feel free to borrow one from me. I have a couple really tiny blending stumps in class, so come and grab one. 
All right, tip number, where was I? Was it six? Yeah. Okay, tip number six, which should probably be tip number one with photorealism, absolutely no outlines. You guys have heard me say this a thousand times. Outlines make a, a drawing look like a cartoon. So instead of having an outline, make sure that you have a clean edge. So look like, look here. I have this clean edge with a crisp change in value. Now, if my edge starts to get a little blurry, clean it up. Make sure that you are um, doing everything in your power to make sure that there are no outlines at all. Now, with this right here, you can see that I have a strong reflection. So it's an acceptable sort of line appearance. But in reality, I shouldn't see any white lines at the edges of your objects. And tip number seven, you guys, I've been using my, um, my blend, my scratch paper this whole time, but use straight edges for straight edges. So what I mean by that is, let's say you wanna have a nice clean straight edge here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my um, charcoal and I'm gonna shade my paper and then I'll take a piece of uh, tissue and I'll blend it up onto my subject. And then when I move this, you'll see I have a nice clean edge. Now, I just broke one of my rules. I used a really nice Kleenex for blending be um, because it was all that I had in front of me right now and I didn't plan ahead. But you guys, never use a Kleenex for blending because it has oils and lotions on it. That's where you really wanna make sure that you go grab toilet paper or like a really cheap kind of Kleenex tissue. Oh, another thing, guys, your background. So you always need to make sure that your background is never the same value as the edge of your object. So if the edge of my object is black, which luckily nothing is, but if the edge of my object is black, you have to make sure that you make your background a slightly different value. And that will keep you from having to use outlines to define the edges. Because if you have, let's just say, I'm just gonna pretend the edge of this right here is black. I'd never know where this ended and my, my floor or ground started. So what I would do in this case is I would go ahead and I would shade my negative space. But that's not the way it is, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in. All right. And I can blend with my finger for charcoal because it's a drier, chalkier medium. It's fine. Um, with graphite, I would say never blend with your finger. I love you. I love you too, buddy. Yeah, that's my mom. My mom is my mom. Tip number eight. Guys, you're not just matching the details of your items, you are also matching values. So when I look at my reference photo, I see that there's this kind of like really, really faint little little dust of white shadow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna like use my scratch paper, get some graphite, or I'm sorry, charcoal on my finger, and I'm just gonna dust it on the table. So I'm matching the values. You guys are gonna notice that I do a lot of shading indirectly. What I mean by that is I'll take my scratch paper here and I'll add a bunch of value to my scratch paper and I'll use whatever I laid down on my scratch paper to apply my value so it's just not overdone or like too dramatic for those areas that I don't want pure white. Tip number nine, work smart. So one tip of working smart is starting, if you're right-handed, start in your top left corner and work your way down to the right so that you're not smudging and smearing. In addition to working smart, use the appropriate charcoal for the area. So notice guys, I've kind of switched over to the stick charcoal for these bigger background kind of shadings that I'm using. Whereas in my, my tiny detail areas, I use the pencils. And then finally, tip number 10, make sure that you're working in an area with good light. If you have direct sunlight blasting on your project, it's gonna be really hard to see your values. In addition, if you're working in a room that's really, really dark, you're not gonna be able to match those values. So just make sure that you guys are always working in an area with good light. All right, that's my top 10, good luck.